Okay, so sound test time, boys and girls. Our knobs here, we have volume, tone, and drive. This is the Acadia Electronics 808 Classic Overdrive. Clean sound, Gibson into the new Smoke and Joe amp that we built here. Probably going to be loud for the camera, so let's turn it down. Okay, turn it on. We got the drive at, uh, we'll say, that's about uh, 9 o'clock, I guess. The volume's at half. Let's see where we're at. Very much uh, like a natural tube overdrive, which is what we would expect out of a pedal called an 808. So let's bring the drive up a little bit more and bring it up to halfway there. Very nice. Bring the volume wide over, the tone wide open. control. Take that down to the butt floor. Okay. I seem to like it about two-thirds. Cool. And then we can turn the drive up more and we'll just turn it up to, we'll just dive and see what it does. Okay, so we got our drive it full and uh, the volume is mellow, tones at like two-thirds. So yeah, there you go. This That's actually nice. This is, you know, there's so many overdrive and distortion pedals that really go crazy. Um, this one I like. Um, obviously it's an 808, so if it's an 808 circuit, I don't know how many changes they made or whatever, um, if any. But I can see why this is a very, very popular overdrive. It sounds like a modest tube amp driven fairly hard. This is kind of what I expect to hear as a distortion and it's very similar to the sound I get when I just turn the gain up on my amplifiers so great um, nice you know it lets you kick in a kick in a drive back and forth with an amp without a foot pedal whatever so all right it works and I guess we'll come back with some final thoughts okay Good afternoon, everyone. DK here with Mr. V Amps, and we have a. This is the Arcadia 808 Overdrive. Um, we purchased this. This was purchased through Mammoth Electronics. It was a gift to me, and my uh, family apparently picked the color and all that kind of stuff. I just gave them a list of different things I thought would be cool for Christmas time. So, an 808 overdrive, I think we all know what that kind of kit is going to be. And by the looks of it, oh, look at that, they even gave me solder. Now, how kind of them to give me some solder. I think I'll probably use that rather than depleting my spool anymore. Okay, and all of the pieces parts are individually wrapped, which is, uh, that's awesome. I don't even have to think. 
this uh, kit should be a lot more cut and dry than the AliExpress kits. So let's take a look at our board. I am not seeing any directions right out of the gate yet. Perhaps they are online and I need to print them. Let me figure that out and I'll be right back. Okay, so the instructions give you a blown up picture of the board and basically a component list and what the values are. So that's fine. That'll work just fine. Let's find our... Let's just start with some resistors, some small stuff. So R1, R2, R6, R8, R16, R19, and R20 are all 10Ks. So I'll just find the 10Ks here. Do, do, do. Ten K ohms, so here's our big list, and we'll put them all in the appropriate places. And this big diagram is actually handy just to make your life easier. So I'll lay those out so I can see them. And we'll just start by inserting those resistors into given points, and we'll solder them in. Okay, so I placed 10K resistors in all of the <coughs> expected positions. And when I put them through, I pinch the uh, leads on the back so that way they don't fall back out. And now they're ready to be soldered. I'll try the solder that comes with the kit. I'm sure it's probably some nice rosin based stuff. A little thicker than what I have on my uh, roll, but that's okay. Should work just fine. Just tin our iron a little bit. Okay, I got our iron flaming hot here because we were soldering on a tube amp. This one makes some solder smoke, doesn't it? This solder seems to smoke a lot more than the uh, stuff I'm used to using. And I'm going to have to get in close to get a visual inspection here because I'm working far away f from the surface here. Yeah, we're not doing too bad, but I'm going to probably want to get a little bit closer detail to, uh, you know, see my solder joints a little better. But uh, this solder apparently works fine, it just smokes a lot. See you in a couple minutes. Okay, so we've got those soldered. Um, my experience is, is the solder included with the kit is a little bit thicker than what I've got on my roll. And that said, it just takes less each touch. So it's easy. These are tiny, tiny pads, so it's easy to get too much solder on there. And one of the tricks, solder loves to run to heat. So once you get your component solder down there, if you just kind of run your iron up the stray lead, up the extra lead, so you, you know, you heat, and then, so we'll just imagine the zip ties my solder iron. Heat here, get your solder, and then kind of zip your soldering iron, just slide it up the lead on the way out. And it'll usually draw up the excess solder while the solder you wanted remains at the pad. And then we just take our flush cutters here and snip those resistors nice and close to the board. And then we'll move on to our next value. Uh, that one flew. All the other ones didn't fly. So I think we did pretty good. We've got them all soldered. They all look good. Not, a, not No big solder blobs. Everything's cool. So our next value, let's try the 1Ks, which are at our... 9, 11, 12, and 17. So, there we go. 
there's a 12. And resistors, of course, are not polarized, meaning that it does not matter which direction you put them in. But if you're a neat freak, you want them all be in line, that's fine too. So I'll just push them through, give them a pinch so they don't fall out, and we'll proceed to put these in the required positions and solder them. And we're essentially going to continue this down the road until everything in the R column for resistor is completed. Okay, I found one discrepancy for R7 and R10. It says 510K resistor. It looks like there's 511Ks in the kit. That should be close enough. But that's the only discrepancy we found so far. Okay, so that completes the resistors. I actually like the layout of this. Everything is pretty together and of course we got the back of our board nice and clean and tidy and no big solder blobs causing bridges and problems. So I suppose we'll move on to the capacitors next. Um, again I'm trying to do the small components prior to doing the large components. So the potentiometers, the switches, uh, the jacks, we're going to do those later. We'll work from small to big. So we'll start with some smaller caps. These caps are non-polarized um, I don't know if, yeah, the, so the red caps and I think the white caps here, which are ceramic, I'm pretty sure those are, oh yeah, there are some tantalums in here. So when we get to the yellow caps, we'll talk about it. So let's just do the red caps here, which are the non-polarized, because we use a, so this one is, 0.1 microfarad, so 0.1 microfarad, according to our chart, goes okay. That looks like it says one microfarad, but that doesn't make sense. 0.1 microfarad. Let's see, 0.1. 100 nanofarad. Oh, son of a bitch. I hate this because I can't translate these in my head. I'm a little dyslexic. So let me put that one off to the side. Let's start with this one is 1 microfarad. Okay. Nanofarad is the one that drives me nuts because none of the manufacturers like to list anything in nanofarad. It's kind of like old school news. So these are 1 microfarad. So this is going to be C6 and C7. So I'll put these in their position. Their C6 is here. And it looks like this is going to be able to sit up. I don't think I'm going to have to tip it over. And it does push all the way into the board nicely. Um, and it seems to like to stick in there, so I'm not going to have to bend the leads or anything. And then I'm looking for C7. It's up here, correct? Yeah, C6 and C7 are 1 microfarad. Yeah, nanofarad, I've had things that are, you know, in nanofarad, or the plan shows nanofarad, and, of course, all the cap manufacturers, it's either picos or micros or whatever. So this is a 0 0.022, 0 0.022, of course. capacitor that is not polarized, they have this marked as 22 nanofarad, so that would be C5. They did do nanofarads on me. Alright, where is C5? Right there. Yeah, so the nanofarad thing, there's a conversion chart you can easily grab a copy of that on the internets, which is nice. What is this one? This is 0 .047. 0 .047. So that would be 47 nanofarad. And this is not my brilliant wisdom knowing this. This is process of deduction. This is the only 47 that there is. So I'm 
not pulling the chart because I don't have to. That goes to C3. And this one that was point, point 0.1 microfarad, that would be 100 nanofarad, I believe. So this would be C8. C8 on our big diagram. C9's up there. Five and six we found. Eight's over here. Okay. Alright, so let's solder these in, and that will take care of our um, red film capacitors. And then we'll move on to. Um, I think they're ceramic capacitors, so we'll probably do those next. Okay, so that's going to complete all of our non-polarized capacitors. Hiding in between these two red ones is a little sort of yellow colored one. That's a ceramic um, that is not polarized. There are some more yellow capacitors in this uh, rig here, and these are tantalum. Tantalum are polarized, so if you put them in backwards, uh, bad things can happen to them. So we need to be careful with those. I think all of the components we're going to be installing from here forward actually are um, polarized. So we have a few polarized tantalum capacitors. I think there's just, just these two. And then the rest are electrolytic. Yeah, I think it's just these two that are polarized tantalum capacitors. And that would be... The value is 0.022 micro, which is 220 nanofarad at C9 and C11. So when we install these, we have to be careful that we don't put them in backwards. Um, let's see, C9 is here, and there is an indicated plus sign, as is there a plus sign for C11. So we'll take a look on our components, put them here on the mat. And we'll probably need to look carefully. Okay, they also lengthened one lead on these. There's one lead longer than the other. And that is going to tell us our polarity. The plus sign is also on this side, on this leg. So the in this case, the longer leg is the positive. And if I'm wrong, we're going to have a fireball. And then I'm going to look really, really stupid. Also, these caps apparently have a little bit of a real estate issue. Their leads are more narrow than the... Um, the lead spacing is a little more narrow than the original. Um, the board was kind of take, designed to take, so these might be a substitution at a later time. But we'll try to get them to sit down as far as we can. Let's double check this one. Let's make sure the printing isn't backwards or anything. Yep. So the plus lead is the longer leg on these. There is kind of a standard to that where they make the plus lead leg longer. We should see that, I believe, on the um, LED. So make sure we put that in the right direction so it doesn't go pop. And I'd like to kind of pull that down a little bit more, get that to sit more flush on the board. There we go. That'll work. We'll solder those two on. Okay, so I don't want to do any tall components yet, like particularly tall ones, so I'm going to kind of lay off doing the electrolytic capacitors, but we do have some diodes. We have a 1N4001, which, uh, where are the diodes here? I'm trying to find them on the list. 
one in 4001 one amp general purpose rectifier D1. Okay. Let's find D1, which it already has the leads pre bent. Wonder if they're actually right. D1 goes over here, and we line up the stripe on our diode with the stripe on the board. And is that going to fit through the through hole? Yes, just barely. And it was overbent a little bit, so we'll have to try to straighten that out. So this diode just slips through those holes. Alright, tools time. Okay, and then the other diodes, and we got that one on. I have it sitting off the board just a little bit. Those leads are stiff, but it's not sticking up any higher than any of the capacitors. So we have the 1N914, which is a Zener diode. It's a, or a, excuse me, it really says high conductance fast diode. When I see these orange ones, I always think of Zeners. This might not be a Zener. I'd have to pull an original schematic, and I don't care to. So on these, again, they're polarized, so the black line indicates the positive, and you just line it up with what matches on the board. So if we look at our big picture, that one goes that way. Black stripe, black stripe that way. This one, black stripe towards me. Okay, transistors, 2N5089. They go in positions Q1 and Q2. The transistor is going to have a flat side on it. You want to line up the flat side of the transistor with the picture of the flat side on the board. These, you kind of got to spread the legs a little bit to get them to scoot down in the board low enough. We don't want them to be any taller. And actually what we're going to have, we're going to have jacks up here that are going to be fairly tall. So we just, we, you know, it can sit off the board a little bit, but we want these to be reasonably close to the board. With the transistors, you want to be a little bit more careful with the silicon devices and stuff. You want to uh, not spend too long with the heat on them when you solder them. So... Um, Put the soldering iron right where you need it, get your solder in there, get a bond and remove the iron. Try to be fast and efficient. So let's just try to be efficient here. And I don't know, that cord always ends up on the inside of my wrist and drives me nuts. Okay, so our iron has a flat side, we're going to use that. Maximum contact, touch, smoke, move. Touch, smoke, come on, touch, there we go, smoke, move, move it there, move. That should be okay, I'm going to inspect these before I move on. There we go. So, all of those look just fine, and this component, if I put my fingers on it at this point, it shouldn't even feel hot, just lukewarm. So we didn't, you know, we don't want to roast them. Clip those, and then we'll just move on. Might as well leave the camera rolling. I do a lot of things when I turn the camera off, and it's probably because I like perspective. I like to be able to see what I'm doing, and to really look closely at what I'm doing might put my head in the way of the camera. So until we have an elaborate production studio, and it's more than some one individual doing all of the work here. Okay, so we've gotten that done. We do have an IC here, and they did give me a socket for the IC. So that's super. Let's try and solder the IC socket into place, because it's probably more shallow than the capacitors. It is possible to solder these ICs directly to the board, but it's always preferable to have a socket because it's easy to roast an IC. On here, it's going to be IC1, obviously. 
there's a dot indicating pin 1 and a little cutout picture on the chip. So the slot on the chip is going to be facing the back here. Slip that through. Now, unlike some of my other stuff, I don't know if I'm going to be able to twist over a pin to make this lock in place. It doesn't feel like these pins are going to want to lay over for me. They're too rigid. So, eh, kind of stays. So one of the tricks to make this work, um, take your soldering iron and get a little bit of solder on the end of it so it's like locked and loaded, and then just hold it, touch for just a split second, just enough to get a barely a tack solder on there, and then that'll essentially kind of nail it in place for you, do two corners, and then you can walk around and solder it properly. Okay, now we're on to polarized capacitors. 100 microfarad, 25 volt. So, the 100 microfarad polarized electrolytic capacitor. Polarized capacitor radial, C1, C2. Those are going to be up here at the top of the board. And Again, just like on our tantalums, the positive leg is longer, but on these they put a little white kind of a nick there. They put a little white nick, and that is to tell you which way to put them. So you line the white stripe of the capacitor, which is the negative lead, white stripe to white line or whatever you want to call that. We'll see if that's going to want to fall out. Oh, that'll stand pretty good for us. And then we'll probably move on to the next electrolytic capacitors and just kind of put them all in position with the leads tipped and flipped here. Like that. Keep them from falling out. And then we'll solder them all in position. We also have a 10 microfarad uh, one that's uh, going to go in position number C10. That's down here. So that appears that we've done all the components with the exception of the LED. And I'm going to come back to the LED. And it's more so just because I have a sneaking suspicion of how we have to do it. Um, okay. And it looks like our hardware bag. Oh, it looks like I might have got skunked here because our one jack here has the screw and insert, and the other one does not. So that may have fallen out during packing or something. So I'll have to look through my bin of things and see if I don't have an insert that fits that. Okay, turns out I did because I have some cliff jacks from fixing Marshall and Vox amps, but uh, I will probably just send an email and put in a request and maybe show them the video uh, indicating the little missing piece. I'm sure I'll get a replacement. Let's do the DC jack. It's obviously going to have to face the outside of the pedal. That's kind of a given. And there's uh, essentially only one way to put it in. And I think just gravity is going to hold it flush here for me while I solder that on. Let's try it. Okay, so I know the electronic world is blowing up on its ear about Weller soldering irons and the uh, fuse, and of course I'm using a Weller soldering iron. This is actually an AC soldering iron as opposed to a DC soldering iron, so it's a completely different unit. And I have no idea if it has a primary side fuse. It might, because the voltage is regulated by a triac inside of the base. So, if anybody really cares, I don't want to join the conversation. Okay, that looks pretty good. Soldered on there, good. You want to be a little generous with uh, the solder on the jacks and your uh, switch here because um, those are going to interface with the outside world. 
I'm also going to want to put my uh, IC in the socket at this time because if I wait much longer I'm going to lose my opportunity and I think you're going to see why in a minute. Hopefully you'll understand too why I'm waiting to do the LED and I might be doing that futilely but we'll find out. Okay, our potentiometers. These are the kind that stick up, which I think is cool because that means we're not going to have to play with all of those wires like we do on the Ollie kits. So potentiometer, the drive is a audio 500k. So that's B100k, so it's linear 100. Audio 500k. And the other one's a linear 25. So I need the one that says drive. This is tone, that's volume, this is drive. So this potentiometer is going to go in like that. And it should ride over the top of those, I think. Okay? Why do I say that? Because I'm going to try to line everything up. When I put that in the box, that's where that potentiometer is going to stick up. Okay? So, there's just enough clearance, just enough clearance for those capacitors. If there wasn't enough clearance, which again, it would have probably told me to lay them down, or you can bend them over and lay them down underneath there. But it appears that we are going to have enough clearance. We're talking like just enough. So that's the drive pot. And then the tone pot is the 20K. And that's 100K. So tone pot is 20K. That's going to go here. And then the third pot is going to go over here. And uh, this is a good time to get out your helping hands kind of tools or whatever you need to hold those in position to solder them in. Okay, so those three are on and they actually line up good with the drilled holes on our uh, board there. That's great. Now we're going to do the input and output jacks. Um, can't get these wrong the way they are. Just put them on. This is actually one of the easier kits I've ever put together, which I think is great. This would probably be far better for a rookie than the alley kits. I know it's not as affordable, but it's a lot less stress. And even somebody who's more experienced with electronics, which I don't consider myself to be a super electronics veteran or anything like that, but uh, even a more experienced technician sometimes just appreciates a good design and being able just to spend the time having fun doing it as opposed to having to stress about all of the crap that's not right with it. Good, I was able to get that to... I was able to bend these tines over just a little bit on the corners with my fingernail enough to keep this from falling out while it's upside down just makes it easier to solder. Okay, so we got the jacks on, now it's time to do the foot switch. Um, it's not possible to put the foot switch in in the wrong position. And interestingly enough, the foot switch and the input jacks and all of that stuff are what suspend the board inside the casing. So, that's pretty cool. Um, so, yep, we'll solder the foot switch on and then we're about ready to I'm going to do the LED, then we're ready to test. Okay, so our box is pre-drilled. That's all well and good. Um, but my concern is with the LED. The LED is going to poke up through that little bitty hole in the middle. And I don't know how long the leads need to be. So, we're going to try to solve that when we put it in the box. Let me get all the... I should have thought about this before. 
kind of want to get the nuts off of all of the uh, potentiometers and possibly we need to adjust the depth of the support nut on the bottom of the foot switch because we don't want the foot switch to, you know, we want it to stay in one place when it's on there. So let me deal with that. Okay, right so I determined the appropriate thickness for that nut on the bottom of the foot switch to be is about the thickness of a dime, roughly. And what we need to do is we just need to line all of this jazz up and push it in here. But I do not want to forget our LED which is right over here. So my plan with the LED is to there's a it goes right here on the board and there's a flat spot on the LED to show you which lead is the negative and that's also going to be the shorter lead flat spot plus the shorter lead. So we're going to slip that into the board but we're not going to solder it on yet and it's going to want to drop in drop out whatever so what we're going to do is we're going to put this in the chassis then we're going to push the LED up until it pokes out of the hole or where you can see it then we're going to solder it so we'll put this in the in the uh, chassis here as you can see, this chassis does not take a battery, which is fine by me, but uh, some people love their batteries. Don't you know, man? Having a battery, man, that's what gives it the best sound, man. Those power supplies are nothing. And the washer jumped up on me. Okay. This is a nice tight fit, so I hope you put all your components in the right spots because if you didn't or if you got your jacks crooked or something you're going to be suffering right about now and that should go in there just like that and once it's in there we should be able to line these cliffs up. This has still got to go forward a little bit. I got this too far back. But you got to line it up so these jacks are here so you can put the nuts into the input and output jacks and the power jack will be a little bit more visible so everything's kind of got to scoot forward a smidge. Okay. We'll do it. So we got it in the box. Now I think we have a case of the Friday Okay, I might have wanted to widen this up. This fits okay. Um, but these two weren't lining up well enough to get the ends on, so I widened these holes out a little bit with a Christmas tree bit. There is a nice wide. But look at our uh, <coughs> jack for the uh, electric. Yeah, the, the power jack, it, it will fit, but uh, I think we've, we've got... Uh, we've got an, instance of uh, it must have been Friday so anyway it must have been Friday we'll just go with that thought and we'll uh, put our uh, rest of our pedal here together put this on there and for our LED I do have it loose here I can you can see it poking up here through the hole you can see me kind of bobbling it there so we're going to push that right up through the hole where it belongs and then hit that with the solder uh, also to secure it down. Okay, so here's my final thoughts on our Acadia 808 overdrive uh, that we purchased from Mammoth Electronics. Uh, the circuit board is very easy to construct. The instructions are, well, kind of not there, um, sort of, but uh, the board layout and everything is real easy. They give you some solder. That's awesome. Uh, they did not include rubber feet, number one, so that's not a killer. The screws for the box are too long. They bought them out, so you can't put the bottom on the box. I had to go find some screws to do that. And, um, well, the box was kind of drilled on a Friday, so I had to widen these holes 
here and you know I probably could have widened this one up to give me a little bit more wiggle room but uh, that was that was my fuss the circuit sounds really good I'm real happy with that um, I think the quality of components is very good um, so putting the board together wiring the electronics part was fun getting it in the box was a pain in the rear uh, which I was thinking if everything lined up perfectly, this would be far less stressful than one of the AliExpress kits because those are, um, you know, the, the board wiring isn't bad, but when it comes to all of those leads and trying to get the pots in and getting the thing in the enclosure, it's a royal headache. And I was hoping this wouldn't be that way, but, uh, well, guess what? It kind of was. So that, and then of course, if you were doing this at home and you didn't have a stash of crap, you would be without one of those nuts for the uh, cliff jack on the end, which again, I'm sure if we just ask, they'll be glad to mail us a replacement. And just for my own amusement, we'll try that. Um, I know sometimes uh, these uh, companies do search for their own name on YouTube, and they have found my videos, and I know we've gotten a thank you. We didn't get any free products, but we did get a thank you from the guys that sell them on AliExpress for for chump change, uh, you know. So that was at least nice to get a thank you. Um, so anyway, I'll probably just contact Mammoth and ask him for the uh, nut and washer that goes on a cliff jack. So I have one for the next time i got to fix a Vox or a Marshall. But uh, do I like this pedal? Yes. Did I like the assembly process up till it came to sticking it in the box? And... Honestly, they, because all of the pots and the switch and these, they all have washers on them. So, if anything, if they oversize drill them just a little bit, just a little bit to give you a little bit of wiggle room, that would be, you know, probably preferable. Um, so that's all I have to say about that. We're all good. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.